This is Extra Paycheck Podcast, episode number 37. You're listening to Extra Paycheck Podcast, where you will learn how to build and grow your own successful online business. Now, here's your host, Alex Soul. Welcome to yet another episode of Extra Paycheck Podcast. This is episode number 37, and today's special guest is Derek Rydell. Derek has gone through some really incredible life changes in the past and lately he has been changing lives of thousands of people. His story is really awesome and he's got a lot of great advice to share. So enjoy today's show. Hi Derek and welcome to the Extra Paycheck Podcast. Hey there, it's great to be here. True, true honor and pleasure. Derek, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Actually, tell us a lot about yourself and tell us about the business. What is that you do for a living? Yeah, well, my my business is I'm a, a personal development, life coach, transformational entrepreneur, and I have a global transformational business that helps entrepreneurs, writers, authors, speakers, teachers, coaches, healers, consultants, um, business builders around the world who primarily want to use their talents, their gifts, their art, their entrepreneurialism, their business to do good in the world, some to make some kind of positive impact, to heal, to uplift, to inspire, to educate, inform, and transform um, business and people and the planet. And so I work, that's sort of the unique brand that I work with people that, that don't just want to make a big difference in their own lives, but they want to use their lives and their business to make a big difference in the world. And so it has a, an element, a a big element of personal transformation, because in my experience, you can't really give more to the world than you have inside of yourself that you haven't developed within yourself. You can't be more loving to somebody than, than the love you actually have within you. You can't be more generous to someone than the actual quality of generosity you've developed within you. So there's a lot of personal transformation, mindset development, soulful kind of work with people that then helps them to build um, bigger, better, more abundant businesses and create better works um, you know, to put out into the world. So that's sort of the, the main thing. It's a global transformational consulting and coaching business um, that has grown to be, a, you know, like I said, a global platform working with tens of thousands of people a year, a seven-figure business, and creating books and programs and, and podcasts and you know, all kinds of different content. Mm-hmm. And for me, the journey to get here was you know, quite intense and interesting you know i was a, uh, I was an actor and a struggling one at that and i was struggling to make a way in the world and to make something of myself and to also heal and improve and kind of get over my hard childhood and heartbreaks and breakups and failures and all that stuff that a lot of us are trying to you know get get over or heal or get beyond And for me, my journey of self-improvement really led me to become even in worse shape. The more I tried to improve myself, the more inadequate and frustrated I felt. And until eventually it drove me to become addicted to drugs and alcohol and almost die from an overdose and then almost drown when I was shooting a movie in Jamaica. And I went off on my own and went diving after I had a breakup and I was just sort of reckless and unconscious and almost drowned. And I had a very profound, I guess what you would call a spiritual breakthrough or opening stuck out in a coral reef uh, on the verge of drowning, where I saw that I saw that this, this, this life that I've been trying to fix and improve and the self that I've been trying to fix and heal and improve was really just a uh, a collection of concepts and beliefs and stories and parental fantasies and peer pressure. And it was a fictional character that didn't really exist except as this belief in my head and that I could never improve him. But I could see that right behind that, that story about me, 
there was a version of me that was uh, that was already complete and didn't need to be improved and had never been damaged by my life experience and mm -hmm. that there was this version of me that was already good enough and I didn't have to go crazy trying to make him better and prove himself in the world and that was a pretty radical shift for me and I ended up pulling out of everything I, I pulled out of society pretty much and I was going to become a monk and mm -hmm. uh Eventually, I, the monk life didn't work for me. I, I tried going to a monastery and I, got, I was fasting and I was silent and I got so hungry and so freaked out that I, br I broke into the monk's kitchen in the middle of the night and stole food out of the refrigerator. So I, I realized, okay, that may not be the life for me. And uh, I ended up sort of cloistering myself in my apartment and going on this inner journey for the next few years of really discovering who I really was, why I was really alive, what's really true about me and true about life versus all that I've been taught and conditioned. And that led me to this, this, this discovery of, of, you know, as I'd had in that coral reef, that there was already a perfect pattern, a perfect idea, a perfect potential within me, just waiting for the right alignment for it to start to come out of my life. And I, I likened it to a seed that just as the oak tree is already in the acorn and the acorn doesn't need to go out and attract an oak or achieve an oak or build an oak or become worthy of an oak, that when the acorn surrenders to the soil and the conditions in the, in the, in the environment match the pattern within the seed, its potential naturally begins to emerge. That, that that's how all of nature, all of this planet has unfolded through emergence, what I coined the law of emergence, which is a very different principle than the law of attraction or the laws of success that we've learned. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a natural principle. It's, it's the principle that we've already got it all, that we brought it all with us, that each of us is like a seed that contains within it everything we need to fulfill our destiny, to build our successful life, wealth, relationship, business, etc. And that most of our efforts to try to make our life happen actually block and create more resistance to the life that's trying to naturally emerge through us. And that's what I discovered. And as soon as I began to become aware of this and put it into action and understand how to live in more integrity with that principle, <clears throat> then my life began to flourish. My life began to blossom. And I went from living in a one room apartment, eating 19 cents boxes of macaroni and cheese, suicidal at times, uh, you know, addicted to living in million dollar homes and traveling the world and becoming a best selling author and selling movies and books and programs and coaching top leaders around the world. And you know, just my life blossomed, everything I'd wanted it to be. And it's, it's always unfolding. It's always a work in progress. But that was really the big breakthrough for me that led me to eventually build what I've built now and to build it in a fraction of the time that most people take. Uh, because there wasn't all that resistance anymore of me trying to make stuff happen. Instead, I was making it welcome. I was I was becoming aware of what was already in me trying to emerge and working in harmony with it, in collaboration with it, rather than what so often what we're doing is working in opposition to our own, to our own good nature and our own best interests. And, and that's what brought me here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one crazy story, Derek. I think you left me speechless at some point, especially those dark moments that you've had. It's, uh, you know, it's really incredible to hear that because we often hear people saying that for some people, sometimes you really need to hit the rock bottom mm -hmm. in order to to learn yourself to to you know to move on with your life, and. I think in your case, it was really that. It was really the rock bottom that. Kanja made you 
um, realize that everything that you've thought was the right thing to do was actually not yes. the right thing to do. It was something that you were told and kind of even on, I think, subconscious levels, you were taught uh, over the time and told by the by everyone that this is what you should be doing. This is how you should be. And as you said, that actually led you. It's not that it led you nowhere. It led you to this dark path of, in your life. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the uh, it's uh, all the struggling definitely developed in me certain skills and abilities that I still use to the day, to this day. But my map of reality was wrong. My map, when we're growing up and we have certain experiences, and just it being in this world in general, we often have maps of reality that are not correct. They're based on coping, survival, based on fear, based on feeling separate from each other, separate from the things we want. And we build these maps out of this experience and they help us to survive early on, but they're not based on what's really going on and how life really works. And so at some point, we run into the, into the problem of our map. Our map doesn't fit the territory anymore. And we start to run into all kinds of problems and then we start to try to do all kinds of coping and you know we 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 speed up and we double our efforts and we just get lost twice as fast you know and um mm. and if you if you don't really know where you're going every road will take you there so you're you're just you're just always going down different roads and different alleys and and so my map was wrong and oftentimes when our, when our back is against the wall or when we've lost all of our options to be able to use the same manipulative coping mechanisms that got us to where we are, we're forced to dig deeper. We're forced to dig down and discover that there are resources within us, that there are, there's wisdom within us, there's power within us that we didn't realize we had. And in some things, you know, in nature, crisis is a very important part of growth and development you know certain certain trees and plants in nature actually require a forest fire in order for them to thrive the jack pine if it doesn't have a forest fire it won't ever release its seed pods because it requires the intense heat of the fire to melt the seed the, the glue, the serotonous glue, and open up the pod and release the, the seeds. So, you know, if the jack pine was like a human being and it had self-consciousness and it was trying to avoid the pain and avoid problems, it would try to make sure there was never a fire, you know? And the problem is, is that if it didn't have any fire, it would stop growing and eventually that forest would die. So for us in our own life, the same is true. The forest fires in our own life, the crises, the challenges, the breakdowns, the problems, all of it is showing up because there's a bigger life, a better life, a deeper life, a richer life that's trying to emerge in us. And that condition is setting us up for that growth and that breakthrough. And it's not always easy, but we haven't, the problem is we haven't been taught how to really grow and evolve. We've only been taught how to improve and you know rearrange and manipulate and control our environment and that can only take you so far and eventually you hit your wall you hit bottom things stop working the way they used to and you have to discover that there's a deeper way that there's a different way mm -hmm. yeah i totally agree with you and i think for a lot of entrepreneurs they had um I mean, not the same kind of dramatic story as yours because yours was really hardcore. And as you said, you almost lost your life in it. But for uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, I know, including myself, I had this uh, a similar moment of awakening, I would call it, <laughs> emergence, when working at an office and <laughs> after a long time of working at that office and being super unhappy, you start realizing that you're depressed, you have no energy, yeah. you're gaining weight uncontrollably because all you do is sit and, you know, you just get lazy. And even after that job, you come home and you're mentally broken, you just don't want to do anything. Yeah. And, you know, it's also in a way... A bottom for for some people who uh you know it, i think i was working i don't know for a year maybe more in a, at an office to finally tell myself like alex that that cannot be it that can't be 
the rest of your life. There must be a different way to to live, you know. And this is when I started looking into entrepreneurship and doing something on my own. But I did have to go to still pretty extreme path to to figure that out, you know, like yes. you said, to open up another way. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Everybody has their these challenges and opportunities and it depends, you know, the, the challenges <clears throat> will tend to correspond to the level of, of growth and impact and intention that you've activated in your life. So for example, you know, the way a plant grows, it doesn't just grow up towards the light. It grows just as much down into the dark, into the dark soil. And that's the way nature works. In order for the plant to have tall shoots, it has to have deep roots. And the deeper the roots, the richer the fruits. And Mm -hmm. so depending on the level of vision you have for your life, the level of intention you have for your life, that can often determine the level of challenge you will have to face. Because you're basically saying, I want to be bigger. I want to have a bigger life. I want to have a bigger impact. I want to be a greater, a better person of greater character. And so now all of those parts in you that are not congruent with that, that are in fear or lack or survival or controlling or feeling separate or small or unworthy, all of that now has to be dealt with. And as that And so as that larger life is trying to emerge in you, it bumps into all those parts of you that are not congruent with that larger life, and they show up as challenges and problems and crises so that you can discover the deeper or the bigger part of you. And for some people that don't have a lot of challenge, it's often because they're not making a big demand on their life. They're not not staking a big claim for their life. They're just trying to get by. And, um, but for people like you and and many of the listeners, I'm sure who really know that you're here to do something more, you're here to be more than just an office worker in a, in a cubicle. You may still work at a job, but your role there can be much more. You can bring much more excellence and creativity and leadership and love and light and service and, and all that. Um, but if you set that intention, even at your office, you're going to now have to grow. You know, I don't know if you've heard my story. When I was, I was a waiter, after I had my sort of opening, I ended up um, becoming a waiter. I went from being an up-and-coming actor who had been in movies and TV and stuff to becoming a waiter. And I had to wait on people that I had been in movies with, and it was humiliating. And, and, I, and I remember making the commitment, I was going to go to the show up at that waiter's job, and I had a vision for my life but I wasn't living it. It wasn't happening. And so I made the commitment. I was going to show up at that job as the person I would be if I was living my great destiny. So Mm -hmm. I realized that in my bigger dream life, I would be powerful. I would be a leader. I would be, you know, bringing excellence and, and love and understanding and great service and creativity. And I would be bringing all these qualities in my life. So I began to bring all of that to this waiter's job. And I began to give just excellent, excellent service and not cutting any corners. And like when the other waiters would complain or gossip about the, the, the client, the clientele, I would ask myself, is that congruent with who I want to be in my bigger vision? And the answer was no. And I said, so who would I be? And the answer was, I'd be a person who sees the best in people, who definitely tells the truth, but does not play part in gossip and bad mouthing people. And so I stopped doing that and I started being more and more who I was. Now you would think this would be a great thing. Like all of a sudden people would be like, wow, what a great person. What a, what a wonderful human being you are. (laughs) But no, quite the opposite. The other waiters were like, what are you up to? What are you all about? What are you too good for us? Um, Mm -hmm. why are you doing such excellent work? You're making us look bad. Um, you know, and I felt kind of bad and, and isolated. And then I got fired. And, and then the manager hired me back and he explained that it was a mistake. And, 
it really wasn't about me. And, and so now I, I dug in even more and I started helping the other waiters and serving them and supporting them and, and, and then giving even better service. And the customers were leaving amazing tips and writing letters to the corporate office. And, and then I got fired again. And, wow. and, and the manager brought me and said, you know, the other manager thinks maybe you're trying to get their job or something, you know? And so, but no, it's not really your fault. And they hired me back. And so now I'm feeling kind of like, I'm like a pariah. I'm like, you know, what's going on here? I'm like, I'm like bringing it. I'm like showing up. I'm giving excellence. I'm serving the waiters. I'm serving the customers. And I began to look at what else, where else am I out of integrity? And I began to notice you know how like in restaurants and waiters, like they'll eat the food in the back and they'll drink the drinks and they'll eat the, the rolls or the chips or whatever. And I was doing mm. that like everybody else. I was kind of, you know, broke. And I was like, but then I started to think, I noticed everybody was kind of sneaky about it. And I thought, maybe this isn't okay. And maybe I should ask the manager, is it okay if I drink sodas and, and eat the rolls and do all that? And I thought, but, but if I ask and he says, no, I'm going to lose all that free food. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to lose all that free food. But I thought it's a dilemma. But I thought I've got to ask because I've got to be in integrity. And sure enough, the manager said, "No, we really don't like that, and I don't want you to do that." And I was like, "Okay." And so, little bit by little bit, I was cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up, being more in integrity, more excellent, and I was doing a lot of inner work because I felt kind of judged by the other waiters. I felt, I felt sort of rejected, and I had, and I felt alone, and I had to really work on myself to love myself and to respect myself and to support myself where I didn't feel like I had a lot of support. And then little bit by little bit, a couple of the waiters kind of came over into my side and really respected and appreciated me. And we'd start to have some deep dialogues and conversations about possibility. And I started to help and inspire them to go for their dreams. And it was like, I was feeling so, of so like who I really wanted to be. And then I got fired again. <laughs> and I decided to stay fired wow. that time. And um, within about a month or so, I got hired doing another job where I was now speaking and teaching and performing and bringing all those qualities that I developed. And I went from making $50 a day to $1,000 a day. And I went from being a waiter in a three-star restaurant to being wined and dined in five-star restaurants all around the country. So my life took a dramatic leap. But here's the key. That didn't happen in my future. All of that growth happened on that waiter's job. Mm -hmm. As I showed up and didn't wait for my condition to be different, I didn't complain about my terrible job. I showed up and brought all of me. What happened was that environment couldn't contain who I was becoming. That's why it kept, it kept firing me. It kept spitting me out. But eventually I became, I embodied a level that that environment just couldn't hold it at all. And, but the next environment that could showed up in my life and I fit, I fit right in like a glove because I had been growing and developing myself all along the way. And so wherever people are, if they're at a job they hate in a relationship that's not working, whatever the situation may be, the key is not to bemoan your fate but to have a vision for your life and to ask if i was really living that vision who would i be how would i feel how would i show up and begin to activate those feelings to show up and be that person in your current relationships and jobs and bring that energy because the thing about emergence is that whatever is missing is what you're not giving because life doesn't happen to you, it happens through you and as you. This is the secret of emergence. It looks like life's happening to us, but really all of life is happening through us. Our entire life is an outpouring of what's in our consciousness, of what we've developed or activated, and how we're showing up, and how we're giving, and how we're sharing, and how we're circulating our own life, and our own energy, and our own gifts. So. Whatever's showing up in our life is what we brought. And if we want more to show up, more to come into our life, we have to let more life come out of us. And if we want something different to come into our life, we have to let something different come out of us. 
And when you start to get that, it's the ultimate liberation. You realize that nobody can repress you. No situation or condition can hold you back. That the only thing, life's never holding anything back from us. We are holding ourselves back from life with some kind of internal programming that says, well, when this changes, then I will. Or when they change, then I will. Or when I have more money, then I'll be more generous. Or when I have more time, then I'll spend more time doing the things I want. Or when I feel better, then I'll start exercising. Or if I have more time. Or when this person's more loving to me, then I'll be more loving to them. But that's all backwards. Completely backwards. Instead, you have to look at, I'm going to be show up in love no matter what they're doing. I'm going to be like nature. You know, the apple tree doesn't only give its apples to the good people. The sun doesn't just shine on the good people. Yeah. The nature of life is, it's an isness. Our nature is we are abundant, powerful, loving, brilliant, beautiful, infinite beings of so much creativity and so much potential. <clears throat> but we've been conditioned into an illusion that says it's out there. And something or someone has to change for me to get it or for me to give it. And when we reverse all of that and say, I don't care what anybody's giving or doing or what's happening, I'm going to start giving and showing and shining and serving and being who I am and who I want to be. Now that's when the magic starts happening. It starts pouring out of you. And it looks like people are treating you differently and things are happening out there. But what's really happening is more of you is starting to come out. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, it's pr pretty amazing stuff, man. An amazing story as well. You know, you, uh, you're a really good storyteller. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The way you tell your story, it's, uh, I, you know, it's, it's really great. And um, I think a few things that I, I could take away from that. Well, the most important thing is that I, I often tell, tell people I don't, Unfortunately, I don't always practice what I preach, but I try to at least, you know. Yes. And one of those things is that we often blame, uh, as you mentioned, like conditions that happen around us on everything that, you know, on, on let's say especially our failures and our laziness and whatever it is. Yeah. And the reality of it is that we do have a choice. Yes, sure, we can't control the uh, financial crisis over the world or, you know, an earthquake somewhere in Asia. We are not responsible directly for it, and we can't really control it, you know, happening. Right. But we are the ones that control what we do in our lives. We control, like you said, um, what you give to people, how you act with people, how you see people. And uh, I think it's the hardest thing about it is what you just mentioned that you stopped um, bad mouthing people, let's say, right, and participating in gossip and just thinking about that just thinking you know i shouldn't do that just because it's a not nice thing to do i shouldn't do that it's somewhat easy but actually believing it 100 percent, i think it's a lot harder and that's something that you need to really reflect on and really bring yourself to because you know just thinking that you should or should not do something it's you know it's it's kind of logic and natural but actually believing 100% in what you're thinking is a lot harder, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's a, it's a process of continual progress. It's like, you know, you, you start where you are and, and you work the muscles. You know, you go to the gym and you, you, you don't expect to go. And if you've never lifted weights, you don't expect to go and bench press 200 pounds you you go in and you work at the weight that you can and you exercise that muscle and then it gets stronger and more flexible and more adaptive and the same thing is true with this kind of work you know um, for me it's like the story of the surfer that goes from beach to beach to beach looking for that big wave but they never go out and surf the little waves <laughs> yeah and so when the big wave comes they go out and hit the big wave and it kills them because they don't have the dexterity, the flexibility, the hand-eye coordination, the ability to handle that velocity. So if you're, you know, you have to start with a vision for your life that's bigger than your problems. 
You have to have something that's pulling you rather than, as one of my mentors, Michael Beckwith, says, the pain pushes until the vision pulls. So you have to have a vision for your life that's pulling you more than the pain is pushing you. <clears throat> and it doesn't mean the pain's not going to be pushing you at times, but it's in the context of a bigger vision and a vision that's more than just make more money. You know, you know, we some we've lost the art of vision in, in at least in the US, and perhaps that's true in many of the Western cultures. But you know, we have bigger and bigger TV screens. We have TV screens that are bigger than the vision for our life. And so you have to have a vision for your life that's compelling and inspiring and has something to do with you bringing your gifts to the world in a bigger way and serving and adding value and all of that good stuff. And then you have to begin to create a practice in your life that allows you to cultivate the, the, the conditions for that vision. Remember, the, the, the emergence principle is that when the conditions match the pattern in the seed, the potential emerges. So <clears throat> once you have the vision, let's say it's a vision of a successful, thriving business, earning a certain amount, making a certain impact, and you discover that as you visualize that, the way you would feel was you'd feel joy and peace and happiness and power and confidence. And, and you notice that the person you're being is playful and outgoing and generous and fun loving and um, creative. So these are qualities of feeling and being. The, the feeling qualities are peace, love, joy. The being qualities are creative, outgoing, playful, generous. Those are being because they're more active. Mm -hmm. And you write those down and you start to go, okay, now let me design a way of life that is congruent with those qualities. So that I'm not waiting for the conditions to change. I'm not waiting for my business to start doing well. I'm not waiting for the clients to show up. I'm not waiting. I'm going to start designing a way of life that allows me to feel and be this person that I would be and how I would feel if I was living my great vision. And, and that's what I call the lift practice, living in the feeling tone, L I F T. And, and you look at, you know, what are the people, places, activities, and objects that activate those qualities in your life? So for example, maybe you notice that when you're, you know, creating something, you feel joy. And so that, but you notice you don't spend a lot of time doing that. Or maybe you notice when you're hiking in nature, you feel peaceful and connected. And those are some qualities of your vision. But you found lately you don't have a lot of time to do that. Or when you're hanging out with certain people, <clears throat> whether it's like on a call like this or, or you know, a podcast like this or, uh, what, or, or on the phone or in groups, you feel connected or joyful or peaceful or whatever. But you notice you're not doing a lot of those things as consistently as you'd like to. So now you start designing those elements back into your life so that you have a life where you're surrounded with the people, places, objects, and activities that represent where you want to be, not where you've been. And now your life starts to get momentum, mental, emotional, energetic momentum in the direction that is, that is in integrity with your vision. Then you look at your vision itself and you break it down into actually a plan. Like if I'm really going to live this vision, you know, what would I be doing quarterly and monthly and weekly and daily? And then you put all that together and I'm basically describing the emergence process, what I call emergineering which is the engineering of the full emergence of your life. Step one is having a vision. Step two is cultivating the conditions, the congruence. Step three is putting it all together into a plan. So you've got this vision that's compelling. You've got a way of life you're designing that is making you emotionally and mentally more and more congruent like I was doing at the waiter's job. And then you've got specific, a specific plan or structure for what you're going to do to move toward your big vision. So you're not living life by default. You're living mm -hmm. life by design. You're not living life on accident. You're living life on purpose. And then you put that all together in what I call the quantum plan, which is 
Now you've got a daily inner practice. You've got an outer action plan. And all of it is congruent with the great vision that you want your life to be about. Now you're on track. Now that's not the end of the game, but that's the foundation for it. And you get stronger. And now as you do that, all those parts of you that are not strong yet, that are coming from fear, survival, um, defensiveness, um, that are coming from woundedness, hurt, pain, unintegrated emotions, et cetera, all that's going to start to come up. And, you know, if all you're doing is going for your vision and doing all these things I said, that's not going to be enough. You have to now know how to deal with all that stuff that's coming up so that it doesn't take you off track and, 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 and sabotage you. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't, maybe don't have time to go into all of it, but I, I certainly go, go through that in my book emergence and also in the emergence work. But basically, you have to learn to then look at that stuff that's coming up and see it, feel it, understand it, embrace it, integrate it. And as you do that, you just become stronger and stronger. Like I was saying before, the way nature grows is it doesn't just grow its branches to the light. It has to grow its roots down into the dark just as much. If it doesn't, it will be out of balance and it'll fall over. A tree will fall over. So... Um, but what we, we haven't learned in this culture, in many Western cultures anyway, to embrace our darkness, to embrace our shadow, to embrace that deep soil where, you know, what's the soil made of? Everything that is dyed and decayed and rotted. And the more of that, the more fertile it is. And so the soil of our soul, the soil of our life, it's not something we often want to go play in because it smells, <laughs> you know, it's, it's dark, it's. It's dank, yeah. it's dank, but that's the only way we can dig the deep roots so we can build the life that has stability and strength and a deep nourishment that is not dependent on the world, but is coming from with deep within us. So that's a deeper part of the work, but as you start to create momentum, that stuff's going to come up to be dealt with. And we just have to begin to put our roots down into that and and do the work to embrace all of ourselves, to really forgive and love and respect all of ourselves, because there's something valuable in every part of us. And as you do that, then your life takes another quantum leap and you start to create work and do work that has an even deeper resonance and a more profound impact, whether it's in your family, in your business or on the planet. So that's kind of the journey of emergence in a, in a nutshell or in an acorn shell. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I really like your analogies, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It makes it a lot easier to, to, to understand and I, they're, they're really great. And, uh, you know, as more I'm listening to you, I, I just can't like disagree on pretty much anything. It makes so much sense. And it's, it's something that we like to ignore so much and to not look at, I find. As you said, there's this shift going on in the Western countries, the Western world, where we kind of like switched our values to something a lot less significant because, you know, because that's what we're taught. That's what we're shown basically by, you know, let's say the media and the people that surround us often. We think about things that aren't things that will get our, make our lives better or you know, people who surround us, like it wouldn't make their lives better. Yes. But it's important because that's what we hear and that's what we think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 crazy stuff. Well, the, what the Western world represents, the West represents the outer, um, outer achievement, outer acquisition, outer creation. So the Western energetic is about outward progress. The Eastern is about inward progress. So, and, and that's why in the East, Eastern, in, at least historically speaking, um, especially the Middle East, there is, um, and in India and places like that, there's a great inward movement, but very little outward progress. And so you, you have the great amounts of poverty and the great amounts of suffering and struggling in that regard. And in the Western world, there's great progress and prosperity outside, but a deep inner poverty. 
and and what people haven't at least the the mainstream leadership hasn't fully realized yet is that they're they're two halves of the same of a whole it's the yin and the yang just like the masculine and the feminine and um, just like the democratic and the republican or the conservative and the liberal parties in any country they're just mirroring different elements of the wholeness and all the fighting and interaction is the shadows, the parts that people are afraid to embrace and that are trying to reject. And then they project it onto each other. And that's what all conflict is. It's the shadow dancing of those parts of us that we've rejected out of fear and misunderstanding. And, but when we look within ourselves and realize all of that war, all of that conflict, all of that is within ourselves. The poverty is in ourselves. The fear is in ourselves. Um, you know, in the East, they've got a spiritual abundance, but an outer poverty, and they've got um, a shadow around materialism. In the West, they've got an, an inner poverty and an outer prosperity and a shadow around spirituality or uh, the heart or the internal life. And again, when these get integrated, then you create wholeness and abundance and prosperity inside and out for everyone. And as an individual, our job is to look out at life or even just in our family, we don't have to look too far, um, and identify the things that are pushing our buttons and that we're trying to avoid or dismiss or control or whatever. And we'll, we'll, we can, we can, can begin to identify those pieces that, you know, if we look at the West and we say, oh, they're so materialistic and shallow then we have to look at within ourselves and find the shallow materialistic parts of ourselves. And once we do, we won't have any judgment anymore and we'll, we'll come more into our own wholeness and vice versa. You know, so it's an ongoing process. Everything in that we experience in our life and in the world is conspiring to bring us to greater and greater levels of wholeness and greater and greater levels of fulfillment once we understand that that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really great stuff, Derek. Yes, it is. Uh, that's, that's, that's something to, um, I, I think when I'll be editing this podcast and I think I'll be releasing into this parts over and over again because there's just so much of that information that, that makes, you, makes you really think and start imagining, um, well, the, the examples that you're giving makes us uh, kind of, yeah, it makes us think about, well, what could be better? What am I doing wrong? Why um, am I, <clears throat> am I shallow? Could I be more um, spiritual and all those things? And that's, yeah, that, uh, yeah, man, see, I, I don't even know what to say anymore because now I'm all like thinking <laughs> about what you've said. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> all this thoughts going through my head which is yeah which is good i think that's the whole point of of sharing information like that and that's the whole point of me having people like you on this podcast so you could share these uh thoughts and ideas with the listeners and with the rest of the world yeah and i and i want to and so and there's no accident there's people that are going to be listening to this that needed to hear this and it's also important for people to know that though we're speaking a lot of philosophical ideas um and some very practical you know, practices that the result of all this isn't that we just become whole or we just become peaceful or we just become, you know, spiritual or some kind of thing. But it, the result is the fulfillment of our dreams. The result is a better life, you know, a life of abundance and success and creativity and fulfillment and relationships. So this isn't something separate from that. If right now you're listening and you're thinking, well, I just, need to figure out a way to pay my rent, man. Um, or I just need to figure out a way to get out of this crappy job. Or like, what are you talking about? All this spiritual, embracing your wholeness, blah, blah, blah. Understand that absolutely you, you want to deal with your job and deal with your the pain in your body or the pain in your heart and your relationship or your empty bank account. That's all very important stuff to deal with. But understand that if you want to actually get free and, and be, live a life that's more empowered and freer, where you feel more empowered and you have more and more to experience and to give, 
doing it the way you've done it before, which is just f- figuring out a technique or some way to get more money or get a better job or that's never, ever going to solve your problem because your problem isn't that you don't have enough money. Your problem isn't that your job sucks. Your problem is that there's some lesson or opportunity for evolution. And if you find yourself going from sucky job to sucky job or paycheck to paycheck or relationship to relationship, who's, what's the common denominator in all of those things? You. And so ultimately, all change in the world is self-change. All progress is individual progress. There is no progress until the individual progresses. So because, and this is a little bit, this might be sort of metaphysical for some of you, but you're not really in the world. The world is in you. The world is in your consciousness. Just like when you have a dream, that dream is peopled with the personifications of your own psyche. They're all parts of you. Well, this human dream is the same. You're, it's peopled with all these different parts of you. And the more responsibility you take for your life and for your own personal growth and personal breakthrough, the more those relationships and opportunities are going to change in your life. The more you project it outside of you and think, if I could just get more money or get a better job or get a better relationship, then I'll be happy the more you are actually making yourself a victim, giving your power away, and setting yourself up for future failure and disappointment and and more struggle on the hamster wheel of life because you're still putting the power and the resource outside of you when the truth is that all the power, all of the source, all of it is in you. That's the truth that has been spoken throughout the ages And, you know, whether it's, you know, Buddha talking about nirvana within you or Jesus saying heaven is within you or, you know, Shakespeare saying that or or Lincoln saying people are about as happy as they make up their mind to be, whatever, wherever, that's the perennial truth. So wherever you are, whatever you're struggling with, whether it's, you know, just the most simplest things to the most difficult things the process of emergence and the process of coming into the realization that all the power is in you and the only one that needs to change is you, the more closer you're going to come to real freedom. And there's no blame in that, by the way, there's no judgment. It's not that we're saying, Oh, we're terrible. We're not good enough. I got to fix myself. No, that's the old model. It's just the realization that there's so much more power and potential in you that has yet to be tapped. And every time you make it about someone or something outside of you needing to change, you've just thwarted your opportunity to claim more of your power. And you've projected it onto that job or that boss or that bank account or that economy or that government and said, if only they would be different, then I'd be okay. You've just given away your power and you've thwarted your opportunity to go, wait a second, no. They don't have my power. They don't hold my destiny. All of life is in me. I've got the power. I've got the source. I've got the genius. Everything is in the seed of my own being waiting to emerge. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks or does in the world. If I stand in my truth, if I stand for my vision, if I do the inner work to become strong enough to carry it, and then I do the outer work to fully live in it, Nothing and no one can stop me because there's no power out there. It's all in me. So even though this might sound kind of highfalutin and conceptual and spiritual for some of you, hopefully you're hearing what I'm saying, that this is very practical. And this is about giving you back to yourself. This is about claiming your power again. This is about rising up and staking your claim to give the gifts and to deliver the the good that you showed up here for. And so if this feels a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit awkward or a little bit woo woo for some of you, just know that it's, this is, this is about getting down and getting real and doing the real work that leads to lifelong success. 
Thanks so much for sharing that, Derek. And don't worry about the awkwardness. I've had one of my guests uh, do a very short meditation session <laughs> right on the podcast. Uh, nice. So, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, it's, I'm sure I see how it could be awkward. And this, um, this advice might be a bit of like weird to some people. And I admit that I was one of these people not that long ago. I would hear all of the, you know, um, even basic things like people would say, you have to set up goals for yourself. You have to, uh, you have to become a servant. Like you have to serve people. You have to not just think what's good for me, but start really thinking what's good for others and how could I help them? How could I become a better person? Is like who am I really? You know, all those things that sound so. Uh, it, it's just a theory, right? It's it's hard to kind of grasp all of that, especially if you're just starting, but. I did notice myself then when I started um, paying more attention to this kind of advice and thinking more and even doing some meditation kind of stuff, right? It, the business starts growing and it's just a byproduct, right? So it's it's advice that is um, sounds really, really far away from people who have never thought of these things and people who weren't exposed to any of that. It might sound um, special, <laughs> right. but... I'm sure that whoever uh, whoever gives this a try, let's say, and starts really thinking about and maybe goes through your books and your materials, Derek, they will start to realize that there is there is a lot of truth in it, and it does, you know, it is a life changer. It just it it's a byproduct. Yeah, it's a byproduct of what we do. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Derek. So. Really loved all the advice and 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 uh, examples and stuff you told us on this podcast today. And before you go, I'd like you to tell us how people could learn more about you. Where could they be- get their books? What your books are called? How could they get in touch with you? And uh, well, yeah, pretty much. How could people find out more about you and about what you do? Yes. Yeah, so the um, the book that I would invite everybody to grab a copy of is called Emergence. And um, it breaks down the seven steps to really doing everything we've been talking about and the process of emergineering. And, uh, and if you get that book, you can get, you know, on Amazon, wherever. Um, you can uh, go to getemergencebook.com. That's getemergence, E-M-E-R-G-E-N-C-E, book, all one word, getemergencebook.com. And... Uh, get the, uh, a bunch of, of extra support bonuses, programs, et cetera, to support you in getting the most out of that, um, out of that book. And then additionally, you can go to get the free, um, emergence training. You can just go to emergence training.com. That's emergence training, E M E R G E N C E training, T R A I N I N G.com and grab your copy of that training there, get signed up for that. Uh, and then, of course, you can always go to DerekRydell.com, D-E-R-E-K-R-Y-D-A-L-L.com to check out what we're up to, what events I'm doing, and, and also go to the free resource section and get other free downloadable audios and support to you know really take what we've talked about and put it into practice. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you for sharing that. I'll make sure to put up uh, the links to these resources in the show notes page uh, for for the podcast. So thank you once again so much for being on the show. Great advice, really amazing story, something to think about. And I appreciate you, Derek. Thank you, man. I appreciate you too. It's really been an honor and a pleasure. I look forward to connecting with you all again soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Extra Paycheck Podcast. As usual, I will be putting up a show notes page at extrapodcast.com slash 37. This is where I'll be sharing all the links and resources that were mentioned in today's episode. You can subscribe to the show at extrapodcast.com forward slash iTunes. This is where you could also leave a review and a rating for the show, which will help me tremendously. Once again, thank you for listening and I'll talk to you next Monday.